This question is a domain question, and what we need to do is find the domain of the composition of f of g of x. I don't like to use the circle notation that's written here. What I prefer is the f of g of x notation like this. And first of all, we're going to need to figure out independently the domain of f and g. And g goes first. It's the inner function. So when you input an x value, g gets it first. So we're going to write the g of x domain. And if you look, g of x is a polynomial, and polynomials domain are all real numbers. So there we go. f of x, however, is a square root function. So we have to be careful, make sure the input to the square root is zero or more. So I'm going to set 12 minus x to be greater than or equal to zero. Solving for x is pretty easy. Add x to both sides. x is less than or equal to 12. And we can write this in interval notation. So we're starting at 12, goes to infinity. And it's OK to be 12, because you have the equals there. So there's the domain of f. Now when you compose functions, <coughs> you have to think about the g function going first. So the first input is the g function, and then the output of the g function is the input for the f function. And what that means is the outputs of g need to be inside the domain of f. So what that means is f needs to have numbers that are 12 or less. So we need to find which outputs of g of x are valid inputs for f. And one way to think about it, the inputs for f all need to be less than or equal to 12. So you could just solve this inequality. The outputs for the g function are less than or equal to 12. And the g function is x squared minus x, less than or equal to 12. So that's the inequality we have to solve. I'm going to show you a slightly different way to get that inequality. And this way may be a little easier for you. I'm going to actually compose these two functions. I always do the inside function first when I compose functions. So the inside is x squared minus x. What does the f function do? So the f function is square root 12 minus x. So I'm going to write that over here. f of x, square root 12 minus x. And we're going to, instead of x, we're going to put a box now. So f of a box is equal to square root 12 minus the box. And what goes in the box is the x squared minus x. It's going to go right in that box there. So here we go. Big square root, 12 inside the box goes x squared minus x. Now this is silly notation. It's not how we write. Normally, we'd use parentheses like this. And now I'm going to distribute that negative sign. Minus x squared plus x, like that. And if you just got this function and you were asked for the domain now, you would make sure that the input for the square root is greater than or equal to zero. And that's what you would have. This is going to be the domain. We still have to solve this. But I just want to show you that what I just wrote down is the exact same as this. If you just subtract x squared, uh, if you subtract x squared and add x, you're going to be looking at this right here. If you got this, what I usually would say is you need to solve for zero. You need to get zero on one side of this inequality. And normally, I would subtract 12x over to this side. And that's exactly what I'm going to do next. So we'll just start right down here with this one. There are the same expression or same inequality, just in a slightly different form. I like my x squared term positive. So I'm going to subtract 12 
add x squared, subtract x. I'm moving everything to the left, so we have positive x squared minus x minus 12, and I am left with zero on the right side. So we're gonna solve this inequality. There's a couple ways to do it. I have a happy parabola, and I need to know the x-intercepts. So I'm gonna create a new function. I'm gonna let h of x equal the parabola, x squared minus x minus 12. I need to graph h of x. The important parts are the x-intercepts. So let's go ahead and find the x-intercepts. If you had a rational function, meaning it was maybe divided by x minus 15, then you would also need to pay attention to the vertical asymptotes. But luckily, we only have a quadratic. So we only need the x-intercepts. I'm setting 0 equal to x squared minus x minus 12. I think I can factor and get lucky. You can always use quadratic formula, complete the square. Those two always work. But I think we can get this. So I'm thinking it's 4 and 3. Now I need to multiply and make negative, which means one of these is negative and one is positive, and I need a negative one when I add them together. So this would be incorrect. This is almost correct, but when I multiply, I get negative 12, but when I add them, I would get 4x minus 3x, which would be plus 1x, not minus 1x. So my negative needs to be on the four, positive on the three. We have zero product property, x is four or x is negative three. These are the x-intercepts. Here's negative three, positive four. We have a happy parabola, so it's gonna be graphed like this. And now we're ready to figure out the solution to this inequality. I called this function h of x. So I'm just swapping an h of x for that. So I need to answer the question, when is h of x negative or equal to zero? When is it less than or equal to zero? I'm gonna highlight on the graph. It's equal to zero at the x-intercepts and it's less than zero in the middle, which means the solution to this is negative three to four closed at both because it's okay to equal zero. Now, it seems like we just took a long walk through the woods. Let's rewind and figure out what we're trying to answer here. Let's go back. We're trying to figure out when is this going to be zero or more, and that corresponds to the domain of the composition f of g of x. So what we just found is the domain of f of g of x. And if you write it in, uh, I call this circle notation, this little circle means of. So it's f of g of x is how you read it, but I strongly recommend you use this notation right here. Uh, to me, it makes a lot more sense. So there's our domain right there. That is the answer to the question, negative three to four, closed at both. This one's a little funky right here. We had negative three to four, closed, and so A is negative three, B is four, and you see it right there.